It is my great pleasure now to welcome um, the leader of the Australian Labor Party, Anthony Albanese, to have a quick chat about it before you go. Thank you. Well, thanks very much, friends. And I, I begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet and pay my respect to elders past, present and emerging. I acknowledge all my parliamentary colleagues who are here, the leaders of the trade union movement, who are here, including the ACTU and the Victorian uh, THC, and acknowledge your contribution. Uh, but I particularly acknowledge Michael, Brett and Zach. Uh, you are very special and uh, we are honoured by your presence here and your courage during this dispute and on an ongoing basis. I'm proud to lead a political party that this year is 130 years old. And it's a political party that arose from the struggles of working people through the trade union movement. Where the trade union movement way back in 1891 made the decision that they needed to take their individual struggles in workplaces into the parliamentary arena in order to affect legislation because industrial action alone wasn't enough. And this dispute this tragedy exemplifies why we need to change this government and change the law. Because this is a dispute that was about the national interest. This was about whether Australia as an island continent should have Australian ships working around the Australian coast with Australian flags on the back of it, with Australian seafarers staffing those ships. Simple as that. This is about an abuse of power by a government. Now, the idea that the Portland, which has two destinations from Western Australia to pick up the raw material around to the Victorian coast there, and then back again, could be classified as a temporary voyage and there could be anything other than an Australian licensed ship doing permanent work is an absolute atrocity and an abuse of the law. And yet you had a government that was committed to that. A government determined to undermine working conditions and to put at threat not just the wages and conditions and livelihoods of Australian workers, but also damage our national interest, damage our national security interests as well. And what we had there with the Portland was essentially people being told, you have to sail this ship to an offshore destination so that it can be replaced by a foreign ship and you should lose your jobs. And the workers there, as workers have for more than 130 years, said no, said no. We will not be treated as just fodder for profit. We have rights and we will stand up for those rights. And the courage of those workers in saying no, in speaking out, in coming here, of course, to Canberra during that dispute, in engaging with support of their fellow working men and women is something that should be applauded and celebrated because that courage, that courage which led to this dispute, which will, of course, uh, be uh, brought to life, I'm sure, by the film tonight, uh, will be important to educate the Australian people about what is going on in this country, about why we need to actually stand up for the rights of working men and women, why we need to stand up for Australian industries and Australian jobs. And if there is an area where that is just an open and shut case, it is the case of Australian shipping, which is why I've always been passionate about making sure that we have a vibrant and growing Australian shipping industry. We had three decades ago around about 100 ships around our coast engaged in coastal shipping. 
Today, that number is around about 10. It's been slashed. And if you look at the, the cost differential between labour, between Australian workers' costs and the work of someone on a flag of convenience, yeah, that's a factor. That's a factor. Because the exploitation that occurs on some of these ships with people being paid as little as a few dollars an hour certainly makes a difference. But that doesn't actually tell the story. Because if you look at a major corporation, you look at the costs of labour on their ships, that doesn't explain the effort that's been gone to to remove the Australian flag. The only thing that explains it is ideology, is a, a passionate commitment to de-unionise their workforce and to de-unionise the logistics chain that, of course, begins on our coast. And we wouldn't cop on the trucking industry the idea that you could bring in a, a truck, uh, have it registered in the Philippines, have it with the same standards, safety standards in the Philippines and a Filipino truck driver being paid Filipino wages or any other nation for that matter, we would say, no, no, that, that's absurd that that be allowed. So if we allow, wouldn't allow it on our highways, why should we allow it on our blue highways? Yeah. It's a very simple principle here. <laughs> so what occurred here on the 13th of January, 2016, where five crew, 1 a.m. in the morning, get woken up by 30 security guards, marched off, marched off the ship, the ship then replaced with foreign crew. There are all sorts of questions about how they got a visa. What were their security clearances? You know, this government's obsessed by security and it's a big issue in the transport sector. But why is it that if you're not an Australian worker, then it's a free-for-all around our coast or anywhere, anywhere else? Don't worry about clearances. Don't worry about who you are. Don't worry about what your background is, uh, what uh, any police checks, none of that. It's an absolute free-for-all. And that, to my mind, shows why uh, this government, when it comes to national security, uh, this is an issue that we should be raising because this is a national interest issue. You hear a lot in politics from time to time speak about the Australian interest and the Australian, that's un-Australian. But what happened here, it's not a cliche. It is not the Australian way, what happened to these workers and what is happening around our coast on an ongoing basis is not the Australian way either. And I say this to you. Uh, I brought uh, commitment and worked with uh, the unions and with employers uh, to change the policy settings when I had the opportunity uh, to be a minister. Unfortunately, we had a hung parliament, so we had to negotiate to get uh, some legislation through. But I say this, as leader of the Australian Labor Party, a Labor government that I lead will absolutely be committed to standing up for the Australian interest in making sure that the Australian flag grows around our coast, in making sure that Australian workers are employed with decent wages and conditions, in making sure that we engage through the ITF as well about issues of relevance uh, to working people in the Pacific and in our region as well. And I know that that's an issue that the ITF have been very uh, concerned with for a long period of time. Uh, but this is an important film. It's one that should be seen uh, by Australians and I encourage uh, my caucus members who are here and others to show it uh, around uh, branch members in local communities as well. And I uh, congratulate all those who've been associated with it. But in conclusion in particular, 
uh, I encourage and, and just uh, am in awe of uh, the, uh, the crew here who are at the heart of this. Uh, those of us who uh, have the great honour of uh, working in this building uh, get paid pretty well for what we do. Uh, from time to time, uh, we uh, have uh, times that you know, can, be, can be difficult, but uh, nothing in comparison uh, with uh, the people who we seek to represent. And it is humbling uh, for us to be honoured with your presence and uh, you are an inspiration uh, to us uh, to make sure that we work each and every day to rid ourselves of this government uh, that does not stand up for the national interests, that does not care about the rights of working people, that doesn't, uh, is prepared to just put aside issues of national security and the national interest in order to undermine and de-unionise this country. Uh, without unions, uh, we just have the law of the jungle. And I'm proud to lead the Labor Party. And without unions, there is no Labor Party. And uh, I will continue uh, to work uh, with your union and uh, with you to make sure that we change this country for the better. Congratulations and well done.